Hey, hey. Welcome to the show. Well, hey. How are you? I'm doing great. I am doing, but I mean, you know, it's, I'm here, so I have no complaints. So welcome to the show. Welcome to Lena Unapologetic. I am Lena J. Unapologetically. To my right is my co-host, D-Ray, the producer. And um, I must say, every time I hear my intro music, which you created, I kind of jam to it. I mean, I don't know if that's like egotistical, but that's a bop. I, I like it. Yeah, it's pretty dope. It's pretty dope. Yeah, I'm, yeah. I'm, I'm sorry. I'm a little distracted. What, what, what's going on? I mean, because, you know, we're here with our family, so. Yeah, I'm, I'm just, yeah, you know, because school is out for the summer. And for uh, those of you who know me, you know how I look and how I look in my setup. And my son has been over here all summer. He done took over my little desk and stuff ain't where it's supposed to be. I don't know where stuff is at. And now I'm at a different angle and it's throwing me off. And It's all good. You fine. You fine. You know, listen. And it's only June 6th. I know. And, you know, I hate to rub it in, but down here in my way, we have a whole week before um, they're home with us. So I'm in. <laughs> I hate to rub it in. But on that note, I have the perfect segue. First of all, before we get to that, I would like to mention our guest tonight. I am very excited because um, I'm hopefully going to get to meet her in person soon. We have Brooklyn Jones. Can we pull up the picture really quick? Comedian and actress Brooklyn Jones. She's going to be joining us tonight. Oh boy, where's the picture at? Oops. Whoa. It's coming. It's Fire coming. It's the coming. Fire the intern. Five, four. Fire. Three. Don't, don't, don't do that. There oh, it is. There we go. Ah, there's that gorgeous face. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That pretty picture. Mm. Well, we're going to bring her on a little bit. Matter of fact, I'd like her to join us on Hot Topics. But, um, how about let's do it now? Yeah, let's Why go not? ahead. Yeah, come on in, Brooklyn. Come on. Introducing Brooklyn Jones, everyone. Woo! Welcome hey, to the Terra Dome. Hey! <laughs> Looking every bit of 18. <laughs> I love it. I love it. Especially right? with these right. braces. They really got me looking like a child. They are adorable, though. I'll take that to looking old any day. So, yeah. yeah. Before, before we get started, First of all, Miss Jones, it's nice to meet you. Thank you. It's nice to meet I, you too. I have to say that you have the perfect Marvel hero name. Because oh, really? It's like Marvel really? comic ready. It's like Misty Knight and Brooklyn Jones. Let me write this down. Hold up. I know this that is giving superhero. But, I love also, it. but also, I got a small bone to pick with you, Miss Brooklyn. Okay. You just started and you already fighting with the kids. I, gotta, I, gotta get this, I, gotta, no, I, I didn't put him up to this. I'm I gotta, sorry. I got to get this out the way. Okay, go ahead. Say it. Say it. The next time you do the EBT joke with the CVS, <laughs> make sure you put a disclaimer that they don't do that everywhere because I took my big ass in CVS with an EBT card and they was like, we don't do that here. <laughs> and, 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 then, and then the manager looked at me and was like, you watched that Brooklyn Jones shit, didn't you? <laughs> so, so can you can you just be careful next time? But it's yeah. nice meeting you, Brooklyn. Nice meeting you. Nice meeting you too. And that's going in the show. I like that name. <laughs> now that you mentioned it, Brooklyn Jones is a great name. Thank I'm you. Just trying to shit on comic book. Speaking of comic books, and our first hot topic. So, are we going to do the graphic? We're just going to jump right into it. Ah, there we are, Miles Morales. Yes. Okay, so here's the deal. I would like to hear your opinion on it, Brooklyn. I am not going to say anything because I haven't seen it, so I'm going to ask you all nicely. I'm looking at you, D-Ray. <laughs> do not do spoilers because I'm going this week, and I want to know your opinion of the movie because for those who don't know, new Spider-Man movie is out. Um, word on the curb is this is the best yet to date to come to the screen and that's including live action now um i, I saw the first movie. oh you did you see the first one you know i'm not a big spider-man fan so i haven't seen most of the spider-man movies i probably saw like one ever but i know you are a a blurred so we're gonna get into that because you are a major yeah, star I'm, trek I'm fan black spider-man though i ain't mad at that at all i might Girl, watch it just because of that go go see it yeah Go see it. Yeah. Hey, what's up? Elliot in the house, president. 
You know, I just found out like maybe a year ago that there was a black Spider-Man because somebody had on like a Spider-Man costume and had a hoodie on with it. And I was like, what kind of Spider-Man costume has a hoodie on? And they were like, you never seen Miles Morales? I was like, oh. and I had to Google him and he had on a hoodie. I was like, oh. I'm going to keep it real. The thing about, hey, my grandson. Okay, you see that? Bonnie Perez says, my grandson only loves Miles Morales. Wow. I like your grandson. I might, I might like Miles Morales. I'm going to look into it. I'm going to give you some homework. Blurred to blurred. You okay. need to check that out. Um, okay. And start with the first one. No, don't go see this one yet. Go start with the first one. So, What's no, the first one? Is it live action or a cartoon? Same thing. Animated. Okay. And yes, she has to see it first. Um, is it what is the title of the first one? They all kind of like the Sump Verse. <laughs> Something uh, with Spider Verse, and this one is Into the Spider Verse. Or okay. the it. they killing me with the title thing because they did that with Spider Man and Homecoming, coming home. I'm home again, going back out again. I'm confusing. I don't like that. I need it simple and. Anyway, so I want your review real quick without spoilers. Uh, without spoilers, no on a on a scale of one to ten, it's probably about a fifteen. All right. Um, what? Uh, okay, I'm gonna have to watch that. I'm, I'm Girl, big, I'm big on story, right? And, and, and you know, if you got the story, you're halfway there. But then the animation is pristine. The soundtrack is fire. Um, the continuity, the action, it's not any lulls in it. And there, if you are a creator or a creative, there's a, there's a couple of scenes that hit you right in your soul that it's like, oh God, the universe hears me. So, now, do you have like, to see the first one before you see that one? Because I just it, is, it, it is recommended, okay. really recommended that you watch the first one. Okay, yeah. I'm gonna say, but, yeah, without even seeing it. Yeah. Okay. And, and President Jackson said it's dope. Yeah, and, and actually, it really is. So um, I know without even seeing it, because everybody in my timeline, like all the blurs, all the nerds, everybody's talking about it. Oh, and shouts out to Sanford Green. Um, he is a South Carolina artist, African American comic book artist. He had a chance to work on it, and um, Afua Richardson, two African Americans. Just wanted to shout them out. Don't know if they're watching my show or not, but. And, and shout out to Naji Jeter too. He actually does Miles Morales' voice on the video game. Sweet. Oh, nice, yeah. nice, Sweet. very nice. And it, and I mean, it did what three hundred and eighty million dollars in a weekend. So yeah, hey, it made more than the Little Mermaid. I was gonna ask yeah, that. About to get to that. About to get to that. That's but yeah, racist and haters. Because if there wasn't so many racist people in the world, that Little Mermaid would have done way better. That's just how you know. That's how you know there's way more racist people than you think. For some of the people you think are not racist, they're racist too because they didn't go see the Little Mermaid. And they smiling in your face. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's all. For my white friends, your homework is to go see the Little Mermaid, or else I'm not gonna be your friend no more. <laughs> I <laughs> to me at the cooler I know I'm not racist. We're not doing no car rides together. Do nope. you go see both of them? You no, anytime somebody white try to make friends with me, I'm gonna say, "You seen the Little Mermaid <laughs> with uh, Halle Bailey?" Wow. No. Oh well, we <laughs> get me. Sorry. Halle Bailey. I thought you Halle said Bailey. Halle Berry. No, Halle Bailey. I was like, Halle Berry ain't in that. I went to go see that. Nah. <laughs> you know, somebody <laughs> has Halle made Berry that comment. Like, what is Halle Bailey doing playing the Little Mermaid? She kind of old, ain't she? There she is. Halle Bailey. Not Halle, Halle Bailey. Bailey. Yes. I love Halle Bailey. She's so cute. I do too. I was a fan from, um, uh, not Gronish, but um, yeah, Gronish. I've been following them since they were little girls, actually, since they were like eight, nine years old on YouTube. Beyonce discovered them That's um, right. on YouTube. So I've been following them since then. So I feel like those are my little cousins. I've been knowing them since they was like eight, with nine them. years old. Yeah. You and my daughter, she put me on to them. I didn't know about them until Grownish, where they play oh, um, Zoe's, uh, you know, friends. Hello, friends but yeah. my daughter was <laughs> like, oh, no, like. She's had them like like almost in the womb or whatever. So we might as well get it in and talk about the Little Mermaid. Like Spider Man, if you watch, I haven't seen the Little Mermaid it. yet either. But that's not the point. My white friends better go see it. Oh, Bonnie has a question for you. Though. Oh yeah. no, she just she just she answered the question before we put it up there because she's you know Bonnie. Sure has, you know what did you think of it? And Brooklyn already outed herself and said she didn't see it. So I you know. yeah, I've been busy. I haven't had time to go to the movies, but I plan to, to see it this week. Yeah, same here, and I'll report back what I thought of it. So, okay, on I ain't to going, I ain't going to see it. So. You better go uh, see it. You have a daughter, I, sir, I'm, and a wife. My wife, took, my, wife, my wife took her to see it. Why Me. you don't want to see it? Yeah. Because I don't want to see it. 
No, wait a minute. You could go see Miles Morales Spider Man, but you can't go see the Little Mermaid. You know what? I think he thinks that the Little Mermaid is for girls. I, oh, he, he absolutely thinks Morales that. For boys. <laughs> He's like, I want to see that girl movie. Right. And let's be honest, the first Little Mermaid was wonderful. I loved it. But yeah, anyway, let's let's throw the picture back where, on the screen. Where did, again. where did she go? Oh, yeah, anyway. This picture? Yes. Okay, first of all, I want to just say she looks beautiful in this shot. For those who are fans of the original movie, you know this is when she's sing, singing part of your world. And she I love looks, that they kept her locks. Yes, I do too. I do too. I'm glad you brought that up. As, you know, both of us wearing um, locks here. Finally it's saw it on Sunday. Told, if you live under the water, your hair going to be locked up. It's going to be... <laughs> <laughs> you know, in the water with a flowing locks. Yo, whether you white or black, you're gonna have dreadlocks if you live under the water. So you know, all the more reason why it makes sense to have a sister mermaid. Okay, exactly. so, so so in my defense, Mr. Elliot Jackson, who is the president of Blast Music 247, said, I will definitely see it on Disney Plus. And that's, and that's where I'm going to see it as well. I because want to see I, it in 3D. That's all I want to go to. See, Me y'all too. don't understand my little girl can pretty much get anything she wants and I may have to sell a kidney if I go to the movies and take her. Like my wife, could take her, my wife could take her and go to Dollar General and get all of the snacks and sneak them in. That's the way you do it. Right. But see me, she goes, Daddy, I want popcorn. You got to get a popcorn, though. You get all the other snacks and dollars. Daddy, daddy, popcorn's got to come from the movie. Daddy, daddy, popcorn I don't taste want, right. Uh, I right, right. I don't want the Dollar General M&M's. I want the movie M&M's. Oh, no. You got to learn how to say no. You get the yeah, Dollar General M&M's, Sour Patch Kids, everything else, but the popcorn you get from the movie. I have a special <laughs> movie purse just for that. Mm. So See, I will teach you my ways, D-Ray. And do I give you a man it. purse. Dudes don't have that. Men have men yeah. purses. You know, I go to the movies to buy popcorn. I don't even go see the movie. I walk <laughs> in and buy popcorn and leave. <laughs> you know, I oh hold up, we got a question. D-Ray, you always have to have popcorn. Okay, Bonnie is coming for you Bo- tonight. Bonnie, Bonnie, I'm gonna need you to just mind your business and stay in your lane because <laughs> you know. Because you know how much Blast is paying me, and I can't afford that popcorn. That's um, the only thing that you have to get from the movies. Because no matter where you go, movie popcorn doesn't taste the same as anywhere. Like, nobody knows how to make movie popcorn but the movies. I've never Blast, seen it anywhere else. Blast music, yeah, $12 M&M's, exactly. And they don't taste, they don't taste no different than the Dollar General M&M's. Now, popcorn tastes different, but the M&M's, the candy, all of that. I agree. Insane. Now, before we move on, I have to agree with with, 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 with um, Brooklyn on that. Absolutely, the popcorn is different. I just know that I need the whole experience. I need to be in the, the surround sound, 3D if I can get it. Um, I, I can't wait. And Disney Plus is not going to work for me, but to each his own. So moving on to something a little less fun, oh um, but no less funny. I'd like to talk about Lizzo. And um, the reaction from, there we go, Candace Owens, looking like a whole Monchichi. All I'm going to say is whoever put the Monchichi on this picture needs prayer. Because that ain't right. That is not what we stand for here at Black. Uh, don't do Monchichi like that. As, as I recall, Danny, we had this conversation in the chat room where we both decided she looked like a Monchichi. I'm Why offended are you switching? <laughs> she said, "I'll do Monty Chi like that." <laughs> Monty Chi, Monty Chi. Exactly I've heard a whole song. What did she say about Lizzo? Okay, so you want to break it down, or should I go ahead, Danny? You go. No, you go ahead. Okay, so basically, um, and I should because Lizzo is tribe. Um, as a full-figured woman, um, she's been kind of out there, you know, in the front lines fighting the battle. She's a fantastic musician, you know, um, singer, rapper, actress, all that, she, all the hyphens. But that aside, there have been, oh, damn, not that. Okay. Oh, yeah, that one. All right. Yeah. All right. Moving on. Um, I pretend like I didn't see that comment. She simply said that the, um, the level of trolling that's been coming from her from people in the comments on social media is getting to the point where she's like, I'm going to take my money. I'm going to get my man and we just going to live on an island and live good. In other words, she's tired of the bullshit. She's tired of y'all telling her about y'all sick of how fat she is and 
you know you tired of her showing her body parts or whatever and you know forget um the fact that she won an emmy for her um reality show about big girls and that she started a movement or she's increased the movement um for you know body positive images all that aside candace owens um or as i like to call her candy ass owens decided that she would jump in with yet another african-american woman because she stays coming for other black women and basically she i don't have the exact quote but she chose that opportunity where lizzo was expressing her pain to come for lizzo and talk about how she's unhealthy so my question to you all is um should that even factor into it because i know plenty of people who are half lizzo size that have dropped dead do yeah, i think it is always is a miserable nightmare of a person first of all yes, second of all uh I don't know. Lizzo might be considered overweight or obese, but she's healthier than a lot of skinny people that I know because Lizzo gets on stage and she performs for two hours. She yes, dances, ma'am. she sings live, she plays the flute. I don't think Candace Owens would last Dancing. five minutes trying to do any of the stuff that Lizzo does. So if yes, you ask ma'am. me, she's, Lizzo's most likely healthier than Candace Owens. A lot of people misconstrue weight as a health factor whereas i know that being overweight can be unhealthy absolutely but you can be unhealthy and be skinny as well sometimes you look fit but on the inside you can be jacked out jacked up and a, a heavy person would be more healthy healthy than you and, and I, stories I, I can tell. yeah and i agree with that 100 percent. one of the things that that happened lizzo wound up blocking uh candace that, and then Candace yeah. went back on on Twitter was like, "Well, I guess the the truth really does hurt." Which, Candace, which no. is clever, really however, crazy. you know, there's the, no way that Candace Owens is a happy person at all. Like she's just miserable. Not. And if you notice, miserable people try to spread their misery. So to see a person always attacking somebody, it makes you know that they're not a happy person. Because I never see happy people just running around attacking people all the time. Thank you. Thank you. We, that's a whole show right there. That's a whole yeah, show right absolutely. there. I just it's the it's the Uncle Tomness of it. And yeah. I don't use that term lightly. And I don't want to turn this into Joy Reed show. Love Joy Reed. Um she's one of my idols. But it does bother me somewhere in here where I'm like you are using your platform to come for other African Americans to make who happy? Republicans aren't asking you to do that. They I don't mean, even respect her, so she's right. doing all of this tuning for nothing. And, it, and it's really, respect. It's, no respect um, from anyone. Absolutely, and, and yeah. it's really a, about her swagger jack and trying to trying to jump on someone else's fame because nobody's jacking for Candace Owens right now no. at all. And not even the Monty Cheese. Not even the Monty Cheese and certainly not the Trumpites or the Trumpisms or whatever. And Lizzo is hot right now. And I don't, you know, the whole is hot, about, she's beautiful, she's talented. Absolutely. And she's the thing funny, about, yeah, the thing about is, Lizzo, I don't know what. The, the thing about Lizzo, not only is she beautiful on the outside, but she's very beautiful on the inside. Oh, she is that. a very, very beautiful human being. And, you know, Candace, like y'all said, you know, she. Yeah, for real, for real. Um, and so, yeah, I, what is it? Bonnie says, why can't humans just be kind? Well, and Elliot, Candace, Absolutely. A lot of people are miserable right now. <laughs> Right. Yeah, right. yeah, I, yeah. Good question, Bonnie and Elliot. Um, I don't really know, um, how to answer that succinctly. So you know, we can move on from that. One of the things I wanted to also do, um, to kind of change the pace really quick, was mention, um, we lost an icon last week, and I wasn't able to say anything about it then. But Tina Turner passed away at 83. Correct. Mm-hmm. And yeah. even though at 83, um, I mean, her family is missing her, I'm sure. But it's not like I can feel bad. She lived a magnificent life from, from the outside looking in. Um, there's so much I could say about Tina Turner. But, but, but let me ask you all your thoughts on it because I don't want to dominate. I mean, I was a fan, been a fan since What's Love Got to Do With It hit in the 1980s. My mom and dad were fans back in the 60s. 
Um, believe it or not, I was kind of relieved for Tina Turner to hear that she passed away because in most recent interviews, it sounded like she was ready to go. You know, yes, she, she sounded like she was just over it. She, um, even though she had a successful life, she didn't have the happiest life and she expressed that. Um, and she also lost her son to suicide and she was just living with a lot of inner turmoil. So I'm just hoping that she has a happier afterlife than the ha- than life that she had. And I'm hoping that she's at peace with her son, you know? So I didn't I know about her son. Wow. About the Turner's death because I feel like she was ready to go. Yeah. I, a legacy. I, and it's hard to hear that somebody who brought so much joy to others didn't have as much joy for herself, you know? Right. I, wow. I, I agree with that a thousand percent. Um, <clears throat> And, you know, I heard someone say that, you know, she gave just about all of herself for her entire career. But the one thing that I think I'm most proud of as a fan of hers was that this last five years, she said, bump y'all. You know, <laughs> you know I'm done. Don't I'm bother. I'm going to enjoy my wealth. Exactly. I'm yeah. going over here to Switzerland, me and my boo. Uh, forget all of that. What y'all talking about over there? I'm done. En- enjoy the streams. Enjoy the playlists. Leave me alone. And she lived out the rest of her days. I wish she could have had happier times and happier days. But what's money got to do with it? Yeah, yeah, she but say she that, found happiness in her sixties. So I'm glad she did right. experience some happiness. Thank you, because I thought that there was, in my mind, in the story that I told myself, the narrative is that mm-hmm. after Ike was in the background and her mm-hmm. solo career launched. I thought it just kept getting better and better and better and that, you know, there would be tough days, but I wasn't aware that she was still going through, like, I guess I'm not the fan I thought I was, but wow. Um, Yeah, but I mean, but think about it. Yeah, when she, when she uh, divorced Ike and she walked out of the courtroom with two Jags and her name, which is really what the settlement was, because she didn't Mm -hmm. want the money. She didn't want any of the houses or anything. She just wanted the name that she fought for and the two cars that she was gifted. Um, There was a period about a seven, six or seven year period where, you know, she had to go get a job. She was on food stamps. She, uh, she was almost homeless and she basically had to build it all the way back up. That's right. The crazy thing is if we look back in the eighties, we look at when Michael Jackson was really hitting, when Prince started hitting, when Madonna, Whitney, All of these people were in their 20s. Well, Tina was in her 40s. That's right. Tina was in the late 30s, early 40s, and she built it all the way back up. And so while she did have a really, really hard life, and she really had a very, very heavy cross to bear, Mm -hmm. think of all of the women that she inspired over the last... Yeah, inspired me. Inspired me. Right. I'd like to piggyback on that real quick. Um, and maybe sh- I did a drawing um, the moment that I found out that she passed away. I did not have, I was working on a client's time, so I didn't have the time to put into it to do a full blown out like portrait. But I did like a 10 minute sketch and um, it was inspired by the, the movie and where you see her and she doesn't have any money and she's telling the hotel manager, um, I will sing. You know, if you let me just stay in this hotel, I can't go back out there. And he's like, don't worry, Miss Turner, we got you. To me, and I don't know how you, where you feel on this, Brooklyn and D-Ray, but that is the sign of a true creative. If you can sing for your supper. I always say, if you give me a sketch pad and some pencils and a markers and you put me in Russia, you put me in China. I will find a way by drawing somebody to get some money and literally sing for my supper. So I love that. Thank you. That That is what she did for me. Yeah. When I was in high school, I used to not do my English homework and I would rap instead. And my teacher would count it as my homework because it was so well written. I, mean, I didn't do my homework, but I could do a rap for you. And I would get up and rap in front of the class. And they'd be like, yeah, that was dope. And my teacher would be like, you know what? That, that was so good. I'll count that as your homework. I so, love that. Wow. that. This is a great story. <laughs> and he was actually mean. He was not a nice teacher. So for him to count that as my homework, it must have been really good. Because that teacher wasn't like the lenient type, you know? Wow. 
He was like, bars. Yeah. Anyway, <laughs> hey, that's what's up. But yeah, uh, before we move on to the drawing, do you have a sing for your supper story, D Ray, that you wanted to share? I mean, I mean, yeah. I mean that that sort of that sort of story of resilience, you know, real is real. You know, forget all of the pro tools and all of the auto tune and forget all of the whatever. AI and all that. Yeah, Tina Turner was the genuine article. You could put her, like you said, in the middle of the Middle East and she's gonna have fans. That's you know right. I mean? She's going to have an audience and she's going to be able to take care of herself because what was there was there. And, and, you know, and so. Last yeah. thing I'll say before we move to the drawing, I also like the fact that she really found her fame mm -hmm. at a seasoned age. For those of us who were at a seasoned age, that inspires the heck out of me. Like, mm -hmm. it's never over until it's over. Yeah. So I'm like, yeah. salute to you, that. Tina Turner. Su success truly has no age. Amen you know. to that. Yeah. Thank God for it. All right. So, you ready? Oh, oh, yeah. Yeah. Go ahead. Here we go. My 10 minute sketch tribute to Tina Turner. Rest in peace, anime. <laughs> That's really dope. You know, you. real quick, Thank real quick. I know we're about to move on, but real quick about that. That that song that you selected was produced by Phil Spector. Yes. He actually had to pay Ike thirty thousand dollars to not come to the studio because he paid Ike. Wait. To stay away. What? Yeah, he paid Ike to stay away. Now the record comes out. It flops in America. It it did not pick up in America, but guess where it hit? It hit in Europe. And she decided that if I'm a hit in Europe, that's where I'm going. And that and was the I record. love that. that. The record. And I she, saw an interview where she was saying yeah. that she's a big star in Europe. That's it was right. like Larry King. And he was like, well, you're a big star here. He was like, she said, yeah, but I'm not as big as Madonna. In Europe, I'm as big as Madonna. So that's why she left. And that's that, that, and that is the song. Right there. Like, My time song right there. In Europe, yeah. I'm out of here. Absolutely. Okay, I'm going with you. That's it. <laughs> Give it up, Rose. Peace out. <laughs> so we're going to do the blast artist of the day before we get to interview Miss Jones. Absolutely. Um, the blast artist of the week uh, is our good friend Lily Lorraine, and yes. really, 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 really quickly, um, Lily suffered a very, very tough loss a few days ago. And we just want to hold her and her family in the light and just say that we're thinking of her. We're praying for her family and, you know, peaceful journey to Blake. And we really hope that he found his peace on the other side. So shout That's out it. to to Lily. Love for you, Lily. You can steal my pictures, try and use my name, acting conscious like me, but you'll never be the same. Looking in the mirror, not liking what you see. Why would you sit here and lose your identity? So go. And waste your day, throw all your time away You'll never get too far No one will hear what you say It's so sad to see You waste your energy Instead of being you You try to be like me Try to be like me, me, me Try to be like me You try to be like me, me, me Try to be like me You're looking so dumb And acting such a fool 
I would have lifted you up Instead you have no clue Looking in the mirror Not liking what you see Why would you sit here And lose your identity So go And waste your day Throw all your time away You'll never get too far No one will hear what you say It's so sad to see You waste your energy Instead of being you You try to be like me Try to be like me Me, me Try to be like me you try to be like me, me, me Try to be like me Try to be like me, me, me Try to be like me You try to be like me, me, me Try to be like me And that was Lil Lil Rain with Be Like Me. And she is among many other artists that you can find at blastmusic247.com. If you are a musician, stand up comedian, or even a spoken word artist, and you're ready to get your art out there, go to www.blastmusic247.com, fill out a free profile, and let's get your art into the community. Blastmusic247.com, changing the industry one artist at a time. That was so quiet, Storm of You. I tried. <laughs> I can tell. I tried. <laughs> okay, somebody's making a baby tonight. No, so. <laughs> no, 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 no. I'm no Bob Barker treatment over this way. Um, let's see what we got. Uh, Angie Monroe, shout out to you. Queen. Hey, Angie. Shout That's out to you. Uh, um, yeah, we got some other comments about Tina. She told America, her, America F. F. Yeah. That's Let, right, but I didn't do it. <laughs> let, me tell you, let me just say, if if I can go platinum in Germany, Volkswagen to all of you, I'm out of here. I'm here for the expatriate thing. I would not mm -hmm. mind myself. So um, I'm ready to get into this interview. Okay, let's go ahead and do it. Rest in peace, Blake. I love that. Thank Absolutely. You. Yeah. Blast family loves Lily Lorraine and um, love her music. So, Brooklyn Jones. Brooklyn yeah. Jones. Again, I'm going to re-welcome you to the show. Thank, Thank you for you. joining us tonight. Because last time I talked to you, you were auditioning for yet another movie, right? What was I auditioning for? It might have been a commercial. I think it was a commercial. You stay yeah. so busy, you can't even keep I try, up with man, it. I try, man. I try. No, you, listen. I was going. Let me just rattle off some of her things. We can show some of the pictures. In addition to being a stand-up comedian, sis is also a rapper, also an actress, also a blue checkmark social media star. Oh no, 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 no! And, and, and Elia Must didn't have to give her that. She earned her blue check mark she got the blue check mark y'all that's right and not on twitter on instagram where it counts so <laughs> i'm yeah, saying before they had before you could pay for it i had it <laughs> now it's like what's the point it's that bullshit right <laughs> right now so i don't even care about that now. so let me ask you um um can we put up uh well we can put some pictures later um because oh there we go let's start with that the okay. black girl magic show okay what is this about and where can people find it? Because I love that picture of y'all. Uh, Black Girl Magic is actually streaming on Peacock right now. It's also on Amazon Prime and Tubi. So it's a comedy show. We've shot it in Dominican Republic and it's five black female comedians from around the United States. So it's me, Brooklyn Jones, Just Niche, Kelly Kells, Alicia Cooper, and Ashima Franklin. That's and awesome. um, we did it in Punta Cana, uh, Dominican Republic. It was so much fun. And uh, we were on the resort. It was just beautiful. It was nice. It was it was weird, though. Like, the comedy show itself was weird because it was in Dominican Republic and a lot of the audience didn't speak English. <laughs> Whoa. So we had to really, really? Like, you know? Yeah. But it was it was a lot of fun. Well, and you know what? Fun fact. 
Um, Brooklyn Jones, can I tell what your uh, name is other than your moniker, yeah, your stage yeah, moniker? Yeah. Okay, yeah. her name is also Lena. It is. So whenever I see Lena in the comments or when David was talking to one of yeah. us earlier, we were both like, huh? He was like, Lena. I was like, huh? <laughs> <laughs> and so, and, it, and that's kind of one of the ways we connected on social media because, you know, I'm like, a oh, funny Lena, you know, versus, you know, artist Lena, at yeah. least actually funny Lena I try I try but um so speaking of that I want to start with my first question when did you know that you like you had a gift for this because I've seen your stand up you are hilarious your comments your posts crack me up I mean when did when did you like have that feeling inside like I want to do this you know believe it or not I've always been a funny person according to others I was the class clown all through my school career and even as a teenager and young adult, people always tell me that you're hilarious. You should be a comedian. And I really took it seriously because I'm like, it's one thing to be funny hanging out with your friends, but it's different to go on stage and actually do it, you know, written material. And at first I was a rapper and, you know, the old, I was good at that. I was on like 106 and Park. I was an underground rapper, just oh, cool. rapping all over the scene. And I started getting older. And, you know, thinking back, I realized I wasn't even old, but being young you think you're old when you're 24 25 and I was like you know what yep. I'm too old to be rapping this is getting dumb everybody was rapping it started sounding corny to me and people were like what do you do I'm like I'm a rapper I was like this is stupid I don't want to do this anymore and it was a scary time for me because my whole life like I wanted to be a rapper and then I, I got to this point where I didn't want to be a rapper anymore and I was like what do I want to do what is my purpose pivot and adapt it was really scary for me because I was like I don't know what to do. And when you don't know what to do or what your purpose is, it's like you're at a standstill. And wow. um, my mom sent me this thing. It was a, a workshop. It was like a comedy workshop. And she was like, you know, you've been thinking about trying comedy, comedy, but you've been, you know, a little nervous to just go try it. So why don't you go to this workshop and see if it helps you? So I went to this workshop. It was a comedy workshop run by this comedian I know named Clayton Fletcher. It was like a, a four-week workshop. I mean, they don't really tell you how to be funny. You can't teach someone that. But it taught you, you know, how to formulate a joke, how to how to cut out the fluff and get to the point, how many laughs per minute you need. And, you know, it's the business side of comedy, how, how to navigate yourself in the business world. And after the, the program, we had our graduation was to go up in a real comedy club in front of all oh, our cool. friends. That's and, cool. Yeah, so our graduate show, I performed in front of an uh, audience of my family, their family, all our friends and everything. I thought that I was on the right track because I, I excelled in the class, but then at the comedy show, none of my classmates wanted to go up after me because they were like, I'm not wow. going to be able to find her. She's too funny. Please don't put me up after her. Please don't put me what up What a after compliment. Her. I love oh. that. I ended up having to go up last because nobody wanted to follow me. And that's what I knew. Like, you know what? I'm on the right track. That, how many yeah. years in the business? And this is off. This is going to be a weird um, follow up after this. But how tall are you? Because I was looking at your pictures and I was like, she is an Amazon. Yeah, I'm tall. I'm 5'9". You look 6'2 in your photographs. <laughs> you know why? Because everybody's short. Everyone is so short. It makes me look taller. Because everybody out here, they're like 5'4", five, 5'3". You know, so when I stand next to all these short people, I look about six four, but I'm actually only five nine. Okay, well, you 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 just you have a presence about you because even in your pictures where you're solo, I was like, she is tall as hell, like Avatar <laughs> tall. So when yeah, I see I you in person, I'm gonna be like <laughs> trying to get up there with you, you know. <laughs> and then my hair is kind of high right now because I lock my hair and I wear. So it if high, I put my hair in a bun, I might be able to get up there with you if I kind of. Yeah. <laughs> my hair adds about three more inches to my height. Oh my so god! You just called her a Navi. I called her a Navi. You just called her a Navi. It's, it's like, a compliment. Avatar tall. The beautiful blue people. I ain't mad at it at all. Man, oh man, and that's and funny. And let me segue this into a question um, before we get to like a couple of real big ones I want to ask you. Can you tell us, because you're a native New Yorker, what is the difference between California and New York? It's the, maybe the little things, the big things, because I'll be there this summer. I, help a sister out. New Yorker, what's the difference? Perfect. Uh, uh, thank you, Bonnie. She said I'm the perfect height. Uh, I don't, you know, the, the biggest difference between, uh, well, not California, I would say Los Angeles, because California is so big. 
is that's like right. Northern California and Southern California are two different animals. Good but point. I live in Los Angeles. So in Los Angeles, the biggest difference probably is the weather because it's warm here most of the time. And even when it does get cold, it doesn't get like bone chilling, freezing cold. Like the weather is always pretty mild. We had a rough winter this year though. It rained a lot and it was pretty chilly. But for the most part, it's always warm or hot, which I love because the older you get, the cold will, you'll feel it. In your right. Head. Right, exactly. So, I love that about um, California, Los Angeles. It's, it's it's slower paced here. Like if you're from New York, it's very fast paced. Everything is fast, quick, moving fast. Here, it's very slow. It's very chill, and that took some getting used to for me. Um, because you know, as a New Yorker, I'm always in a hurry, and they're very laid back here. Like I remember one time I was in a 99 cent store. And they only had one line open and it was just, everybody was just taking their sweet time. And I'm like, hello, where are all people? <laughs> Somebody need to come over here. And my friend who was with me was like, why are you in such a rush? What do you have to do after this? And I was like, nothing. I'm sorry, <laughs> that's like, funny, this picture net. Yeah, I was in the mall. I was rushing through the mall. Like I'm just window shopping and I'm running through the mall. Excuse me, I'm walking here. Um, Excuse me, y'all blocking here. Walking here, here. <laughs> walking here. And it's like, why, why are you rushing through the mall? You're not even on a deadline. You're just supposed to be window shopping. So it took me a few years to be able to be laid back. And it was crazy because after I lived here for one year, um, I went back to New York to visit and it was like a culture shock. My mom wow. was like, what are you, like, it's not crowded here. Like, in, a, in LA, you can walk down the street with your arms spread out and not slap nobody. You know, the streets are empty. It's the, the, the sidewalks are empty. It's the streets that are crowded with all the cars. There's not a wow. lot of nothing. There's never anybody in your way unless you're on Hollywood <laughs> Boulevard, which is like the tourist area. But if you're just walking down a regular street, there's never anyone in your way. So I got used to that. Wow, you know, that is not New York. New York. I know that no. much when I go visit. I love New York, but it's, yes. yeah, so when you I ain't went doing to New that. York, it was crowded and it was like all these people coming at me and, and it made me nervous. I just stopped in the middle of the street and I was just looking and my mom was like, what are you doing? And I was like, I'm just like overwhelmed. She had to hold my hand just after one year of living in LA. She had to hold my hand through the street because I didn't know how to weave through all the people. I was waiting for the light to change because out here, um, when I first moved here, you couldn't jaywalk. It was against the law. They'll give you a ticket. So I'll wait for the light to change. So now I got used to that. So I'm in New York waiting for the light to change. My mom's like, what are you doing? Like, I'm going. So, yeah. So it was like a huge culture shock. My mom lives here with me now. So if she went back to uh, New York now, she would be confused just like me. But at the time, she was still there. But I'm going to remind time, you something you said one time that I thought was hilarious. What? Um, you put on Facebook that the state of Los, no, the city of Los Angeles smelled like a giant blunt. <laughs> Do you remember when you wrote that? That just cracked oh, me the yeah. hell up. You were like, and everything smells like weed out here. Shit. It did. <laughs> weed became legal out here before, like most other places. So people right. just like, you know, in New York, people stand outside smoking a cigarette. People right. out here in the corner just smoking weed, smoking blunt. So I'm like, everywhere I go, it just smells like weed. It, it was just the whole crazy, city. Crazy to me. The whole city just smelled like weed. It was wild. See, yeah, I'm gonna be ready for that because I go to the grocery <laughs> store and I'm, I I put on my old lady face like, damn, do you have to smoke in the food lion? So I don't know if I'm ready for that. Like um, that in the the food, you you'll definitely smell weed uh, walking down the street. Um, the food, wow. the food. Um, as a New Yorker, like people from LA, they're like, food here is delicious. But as a New Yorker, it's a culture shock because in in New York, we're used to. Um, different ethnicities of food because it's such a yes. in New York. So we're used to having our Puerto Rican food, our Dominican food, our Jamaican food. It's not like that out here. It's mostly Mexican food. And if you do find any kind of Spanish type food besides Mexican, it'll probably be Cuban or Salvadoran, which mm. looks similar to Puerto Rican food, but it doesn't taste the same. It's more like the white people version of that food. So it's a little more bland. Ah, uh, <laughs> that's what I heard. Like, you know, not real Mexican food. Mm. Yeah, I went to a Cuban restaurant and I ordered this food and it looked very much like Dominican food, but when I tasted it, it was kind of bland. I was like, where's the seasoning? So um, it was kind of rough for me. When I first moved here, I lost 15 pounds because I didn't like it. I see. Food. You look great, if I may <laughs> say that. From the photo, because you. you can see in the photographs, I was like, "Wow, she's really losing weight out there." And you weren't yeah. full figure to begin with, but you were thicker. Yeah, you know, so I'm you still that LA thick, slim. thinner than I was. Um, but I've 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 found a few restaurants that I really like, and then I started cooking. Because when New York, I wasn't much of a cook. I knew how to cook, but I didn't really do it. But once I got out here, I really didn't have a choice. 
So I had to learn how to make my own food because I was craving New York food. So I learned how to make Dominican rice and beans. There's like certain Dominican food I know how to make. Chinese restaurants here, the, I, I can't say they don't exist, but they don't exist like the ones in New York. You're not going to get ah. chicken wings and fried rice out here like you do in New York. It's not. Okay, I'm not going. going. <laughs> not going to eat at all. <laughs> Nowhere here. Y'all going to have to ship something in. <laughs> nah, you know, I've never seen chicken wings and fried rice like that out here. And if you do get fried rice out here, it's going to cost you like $15. And it's not going to be as good as the $3 to $5 wow. rice you get in, wow. in, in uh, New York. So it was well, really a culture shock with the food. But I found a way to navigate my way around it. Um, I'm, I'm looking for a Dominican girlfriend. So if you're out there and you find and you can cook, hit me up. So I think I can Bonnie, talk about this. Ah, Bonnie, read this. Bonnie, Bonnie says, so I think I can talk about this because I am Latina. If you go to a restaurant and there are no Latinos, leave. <laughs> yeah. But the thing is, like, there were Latinos there, but I think they were Cuban. So they were eating Cuban food. I don't know Cuban food like that. You know what I'm saying? Aren't Cuban the, the whiter of the Latinos? They are. <laughs> Let me ask you a couple of other questions, and they might be a little quick, but I want to make sure I get them in. Um, before, oh, to a Mexican restaurant. Ah, okay. Did you see the the answer? Um, yeah, the Mexican food is a plenty. They keep they just keep opening Mexican restaurants. There's tacos everywhere. You you can even get I tacos heard. in soul food restaurants. They be making uh mac and cheese, fried chicken tacos, y'all. Oh, you're making me hungry. Okay, okay. We we, we stop. No, no, I haven't had dinner. Segment. Did you say fried chicken tacos? Yeah, that sounds good. Tacos out here in the soul food restaurant. I want a mac and cheese, cheese taco. Mm. Yeah, I'm going to a food truck. So let me ask you this. Um, you have a couple of famous friends that mm -hmm. I'm curious about. Actually, you have a lot of famous friends. I do. <laughs> but um, I because I, I've stalked your Facebook, so I was like, she knows everybody. I do. Um, but there are two in particular that you're friends of. We can put the picture up. You were on a show um with two people that I'm fans of but there we go flex and shanice mm -hmm. and, and do you see where do you see where brooklyn is um she's there like well everybody has long hair but i'm on the far right on the far right <laughs> with the long at the time. oh okay okay i thought they were locks okay gotcha no, those are braids i i um <clears throat> i used to wear my hair in extensions but i realized i braid my hair all the time so i just decided to lock it because i was like i keep it in braids anyway so i'm gonna lock it so these are these are my real locks but they haven't grown that long yet. I'm, no, they're I'm beautiful. Thank uh, you. So, um, you're friends with both, but who were you friends with first? I think Shanice, right? Yeah, I was friends with Shanice first. I've been friends with Shanice since I was pretty much a kid, probably like 12 or 13. Wow. Um, I was a fan of Shanice's when I was a kid, and I found out she was going to be at the Macy's Thanksgiving Day Parade. Oh, so cool. I got up early, early in the morning. I'm not even an early riser. So when my mom saw me at the crack of dawn, she was like, what are you doing up? And I was like, Shanice is going to be at the parade, and I'm going. So I got up. I left my house on Thanksgiving and went to, I went all the way up to like 80-something Street in Central Park West at the beginning of the parade to try to meet Shanice. And when I got there, she was already on the float. So I didn't get wow. to meet her, but I saw her on the floor. And I said, hey, Shanice, I'm your biggest fan. And she's like, hey. And I'm like, well, I want to meet her. How am I going to meet her? I can't meet her until the end of the parade. So I ended up walking the whole parade. I was in the parade. Wow. <laughs> you watch the Macy's Thanksgiving Day Parade, you'll see me in the parade marching next to Shanice's float. I walked from 84th Street to 34th Street. And then Her determination got... yeah. is. And it rained. Uh -huh. It was pouring down rain. I walked in the rain in, in the parade to meet Shanice. She came off the you... float. <laughs> I met her and her mom. So that was my first encounter with Shanice. We didn't become friends that day, but I left a memorable impression. So um, as I got older, you know, sometimes I would go, I, I started, I got a job working at like award shows or whatever. Mm -hmm. um, and so when I would get to the award show, sometimes Shanice would be there, she'd be singing. She'd be like, hey, hey. So I'm a teenager at this time. Hey, what's up? So I would start to see Shanice at various events. And then um, we just kind of got used to each other, you know, seeing each other. And um, when I went to college, I went to school for graphic design. And did you? I didn't yeah, know that. yeah. So oh, wow, I went to school wow, cool. design. And I had a website design class, and our assignment was to build a website about something or somebody. So I built a website about Chinese because at the time, fan sites were like a thing. So I was like, I'll build a website about Shanice. And her aunt saw it and sent it to her. And Shanice was like, wait a minute, I know that girl. Give her my number. So she gave me um, Shanice's number. I called Shanice and we've been friends ever since. 
So wow. I knew her probably for like 20 years. I was at her wedding. I watched her children grow from infants to adults. Like me and Shani's go way back. But I started out as a fan when I was a kid. I'm impressed. <laughs> now, you know, there are two ways to take this story. Yeah. The first way, the way I take it is determination. Yeah, for sure. You want something, you go for it. Mm -hmm. The other way sounds like a lifetime movie, like Swarm. Like a stalker. Like, right. <laughs> Bitch, you're going to be my friend. <laughs> it, wasn't, it wasn't like that because I wasn't like well, everywhere the other. she was. You know, like I wasn't, I wasn't like everywhere she was. I When I started being everywhere she was, it was to the point where we knew each other. So she would invite me. So she would call me and be like, hey, I'm coming to New York. I have a show. When it come? Hey, my album's coming out. I'm doing an album release party. Your name's on the list. So by the time I started like seeing Shani's oh, all wow. the time, we were already friends. But the first time I met her, that first introduction, I was determined. I was like, I'm going to meet Shanice. And I met her that day. But like after that, I wasn't just like stalking her all the time. Oh, she was in a um in like Miserable. And I what? went over oh, there wow. to see if I could see it. Yeah. Uh, I went over there to see if I could see her like Ms. Rob. And she remembered me from the parade. And she's like, oh, I remember you. Here, here's some free tickets to the show. So I wasn't I like lovely a Ms. crazy star. Oh. Shanice was like, like the sweetest person. And she never treated me like a weirdo. But I wasn't a weirdo. I wasn't just going around. No, no. I, I, listen. Um, but it, it could sound crazy. Like, especially the parade. I walked in the rain. But, but yeah, kids are crazy. Brooklyn, this is now your fault. Every time I see you, now I'll be thinking. You know, that's still on my playlist. I mean, I know she has other songs, but yeah. I Love Your Smile is the one for me. Like She's an excellent singer. You got to listen to her other music. She's a really, like, uh, I Love Your Smile doesn't really display her vocal ability. She's really one of the top singers. Wow. If you really listen to her. She's an excellent singer. Um, shout out to Shanice. She's actually one of my shout best, out to best Shanice. friends. And I'm actually one of her best closest friends. Um, I've uh, been in her life most of my life. I've known her my whole adult life and part of my childhood. I've babysat her kids, changed their diapers. Like, So you knew her before she met Flex then? Oh, yeah. I know her. Absolutely, because they've been married for years, but you guys were like... Like practically, I saw pictures. You guys were like teenagers mm -hmm. in those photographs. I was like, oh, they go back, back. Yeah, like that's they need to go way back. And yeah, I knew her before her and Flex got together. So, and not to stay on the two of them because um I'm interviewing you, but I have to ask. No, it's fine. I don't care. Real tea. No, no, no. I'm. I mean, seriously. Like I, I got all these questions I want to ask, <laughs> but I just have to ask this really quick because I'm a fan of um Flex's TV shows. Mm -hmm. Um. The one with Kyla Pratt, which I'm having one -on -one. a rain fart right now. One -on -one. Um, huh? One on one. One on one. I was thinking out and out, just making up <laughs> shit. Just uh, I'm 51, y'all. But um, <laughs> I have to ask because, like I said, I'm a fan of both of them respectively. What did you really think of Homeboys in Outer Space? Homeboys in Outer Space. You know what's funny? That show was so long ago. I really don't remember a lot of the details. Um, so I can't really speak to what I thought of the actual show. I thought Flex as a um, person and character was funny. I was always a fan of Flex before I even met him. I used to watch him on Uptown Comedy Club. Right, and I remember that. On the show, so I'm at the Apollo. So I thought, I think Flex as a person is funny to me. Homeboys in Outer Space is a weird premise to me. Just thinking of it, it sounds dumb. So I don't know. Because <laughs> I'm so glad that work. I came to me right now, like I'm gonna pitch a show to you. It's called Homeboys in Outer Space. I'd be like, man, get out of my face. That sounds stupid. But I don't remember the details of the show. It might have been hilarious. I have no idea. I watched because I was a fan of both his as well as um I'm forgetting the actor's name, but um Ron Johnson from a different world. Oh they yeah, did the yeah. show together. Um, Daryl Bale, that's his Bell name, Bell. Daryl uh -huh. and Bale. So, yeah, but Is I that wanted to ask that. I don't yep. Even remember that. Yep, they were co pilots. Was Dougie Doug, but that might have been another show. Um, he was on a show with Dougie Doug as well. Yeah, uh, you and I both have been fans of both of theirs for a long time. But mm -hmm. okay, so moving on from, from, from Flex, I want to ask you as shout a out comedian, to Flex. that's my big bro. I love him. Absolutely, <laughs> shout outs to Flex and Shawnee. Um, yeah. And I and shout outs to them as a married couple in Hollywood because from what I've seen, if you can stay together with all the craziness that we hear about, they've been married for like twenty five years. They've been married for wow. like twenty five years. Yeah. Um, yeah. So yeah, they, they really need to write a book. Sure. And yeah, they do. And the crazy thing about them is like you know a lot of people when they meet 
they'll say boyfriend and girlfriend for years before they get married. Flex and Shanice got married after 11 months. So everybody, if that's you what I'm you talking about, to last, you got to get married early. Don't be beating around the bush. Let me just say this, yeah. fellas. It don't take years. Mm -mm. Yes, I'm talking to you, ex-boyfriend. Mm -mm. But anyway. <laughs> so, don't take years. You know, you know, in a couple of months. Right. You, you, you know, you know, you know. <sighs> the, the Go ahead, D-Ray. The opinions of Lena Unapologetic do not reflect those of Blast Media, Blast Radio, or any other fellas that happen to be listening on this podcast. Thank you. <laughs> so, so anyway, um, I asked this um, as a comedian. I want to know your opinion on this. That's what mm -hmm. I'm talking about. Um, blue comedy. You and I talked about people like Monique on social media. And as a, a comedian, I wanted your opinion on it. Um, and I'm a fan of hers. But where do you stand as a professional funny person on pop, excuse me, political culture? Mm -hmm. politically correct culture where do you stand on that are there shows you won't do like will you not do a college because you don't want to have a censor list that you can't say are there any limitations because of this forced pc thing that's going on right now i gotta say i hate the forced pc <laughs> thing i hate the whole cancel culture the political correctness it's really put a damper on comedy and it's made a lot of comedians censor their voices and i don't think that's good because comedians of if of any other talent are the people who are out here to say what other people are thinking, even if it's not good. My rule of thumb is if it's funny, say it because yes, ma'am. <laughs> no matter how horrible it is, if it's hilarious, people will let that slide because they'll be like, That was horrible what you just said, but it was hilarious, and they'll laugh it off. So right. you if you're gonna say something crazy, just make sure it's real funny. But I hate the whole cancel culture po political correctness thing. Um, as far as me personally. I don't do, I don't really do anything that's cancel worthy. I don't think, I, I don't curse a lot in my comedy. If I do use a curse word, it, it needed to be there to make the joke funnier. I don't just be cussing through my comedy just to be doing that. Now, when I first started comedy, I did because I thought that was what you were supposed to do. And a, a veteran comedian, um, Robin Montague came up to me after my set and she said, you are really funny. You don't need all those curse words. Take all of it out. She's like, take every wow. curse word out of your comedy and do it clean. She's like, your jokes are so funny. You don't need all of that. And she was like, if you do your comedy clean, you'll get booked more. You'll be able to do TV. You'll be able to do all kinds of shows. You limit yourself when you curse. And I took that with me throughout my career. And I don't curse in my comedy. I, I won't say that I don't curse at all because I might throw a little word out here and there, but you won't hear me cursing throughout all my jokes. It's not a lot of cursing. It might be a sprinkle in if it embellishes the joke and makes it funnier. That's some really great advice. Wrong. Yeah. So shout out to you, Robin Montague. I appreciate you. Thank you. Yeah, I don't really do raunchy comedy. I'm not knocking anybody who does, but that's just not me. That's not me as a person. It's not my style. Um, but I, my rule of thumb is if it's funny, say it. <laughs> <laughs> I have a question. But make sure it's funny. Yeah, right. If it ain't funny, then you're just a horrible person who said right. a horrible thing. Right. <laughs> I like that. Yeah. I, I, more on that later when we talk behind the green room. But go ahead, D Ray. <laughs> yeah. So uh, the first guest on Lena Unapologetic was Rain Pryor. And we talked about her father. And I, I remember asking her or telling her about how it was her father's timing. It, it, he had timing of a jazz musician. Um, and, you know, if you go into his background, he studied music, he was a phenomenal singer, things of that nature. Do you find that the timing that you used as an MC when you were rapping and when you were going around and rhyming, do you find the same sort of timing that when you're on stage, you know, slinging jokes? Excellent question. Yeah. That is an excellent question, and very much so. I even have in the past compared comedy to uh, rapping. They're very, very much the same. Because when I was rapping, it was very, um, with rapping, you have to have a flow, you have to have specific timing, and you have to have punchlines. With comedy, you have to have a flow, you have to have specific timing, and you have to have punchlines. So the only difference between rap and comedy is rap rhymes, and you have to do it to a beat. But other than that, they're one and the same. Like, you got to have punchlines. You have to um, make people listen and make people think and be in awe of the words that you said 
So that's the only real difference. And even with rap, you have to say stuff that's funny. You have to have punchlines that are funny, that are thought provoking, that make you say, oh snap, I can't believe she said that. So it's exactly the same thing to wow. me. So I believe that me being a rapper has contributed to me being able to be a comedian for sure. Dope. Very Don't you love that? I mean, mm -hmm. I love, th that's the arts. You yeah. know, many of us are multidisciplined and mm -hmm. so it all comes writing, yeah. you know. And they go I, hand in hand. So when I started doing com comedy, um, even though I wasn't rapping anymore, it's still in me. The music and the rap is still in my body. So I kind of incorporated the two and I started doing parodies. So I did a Beyonce parody called um, Chunky Love. Yes, I love Love that, love that one. Up. Thank you. And then I did an Iggy Azalea parody instead of Fancy. It's called Lazy. So I rapped the whole song. So it was rap. And both of those songs were intertwining rap and comedy. We wanted to show them, but YouTube is YouTube. So it's we'll good. leave it at that. But Let's look, look it up. Look up uh, Brooklyn Jones uh, Fancy parody and look up Brooklyn Jones Chunky Love and you'll be able to see them. I think you'll I'm gonna post it. I'm, I'm going to post it on my, my social media too and tag some people so they can see it because the Iggy Azalea one was new to me. I'd already seen the Chunky in Love and I love that one when you first post it. Um, watched it a couple of times, but the Iggy Azalea when I was like, "Damn, she sounds better than her." But um, <laughs> in the comments, that, that I'm just, I'm just keeping it real. But <laughs> listen, um, we're Thank almost you, out of time. Can we um, mention some of your shows coming up? Because I want people to know where they can find you next. Sure. So I have a lot. It's Pride Month, and I have a lot of Pride shows coming out. Um, all of them are in California. So if you're in California, guys, I'm around all month. June 8th, I'm in Santa Inez at Four Brothers Wine Company. June 9th, uh, I'm in Huntington at the Rec Room. Uh, I don't want to list all my, my comedy shows because we'll be here all day. But uh, Oakland, you got one in Oakland, right? Uh, I have no. one in Oakland on June 22nd at the K Rico uh, Lounge. So definitely come through. Uh, if you go on my, my Instagram at It's Brooklyn Jones, I have all my shows listed. So if you would like to come out and laugh with me, hang out with me, get some drinks, definitely come to one of my California comedy shows. I know when I come to California, you promise we're going to get to hang together, right? Yeah, for sure. <laughs> we're going to find that one Chinese restaurant. And, uh, and you one know, there was one that was similar to New York, but it closed during the pandemic. And that made me really sad. That's, um, that that's the only one that I know of. Yeah, so we'll probably have to get some uh, mac and cheese tacos or something. Just <laughs> take me to the best food truck. I want to be like Issa Rae and Insecure going to food that's truck. Food get me truck. like a mac and cheese taco. Um and I want some authentic Mexican food, authentic for sure. Food. I'm going to have to ask around, because you know what's funny? I um, I like Mexican food, but it's not at the top of my list of favorite foods. So I really I don't use a lot of Mexican restaurants. I usually, like, there's a taco stand in my neighborhood that makes tacos that I like. So I go to them. But I don't go just eating Mexican food. It's, I, it's not really my thing. I, I like, I like um, Dominican food, soul food. Most of the food I cook, um, I eat, I cook myself because they don't really make the food out here that I like. But there is an Ethiopian restaurant out here that I really love. Maybe I'll take you there. Um, yes. Rosalind's. And they make this dish called fish chip. It's like this deep fried uh, rainbow trout. And they serve it with lentils and uh, cabbage and collard greens. That is absolutely delicious. So I'm having a big girl moment. Don't come for me, Candace. Someone's I'll fuck you up. Oh, Bonnie no. said I lost her. I'm sorry, Bonnie. <laughs> it's not that I don't like Mexican food. I do like Mexican food. <laughs> just not at the top of my list there's a bunch of foods that come before that like we love you buddy <laughs> jamaican food soul food chinese food all of those come before mexican food I'm sorry. brooklyn this is our this is our boy big low he's a uh, comedian here in north carolina says what up good people I have to catch the replay got the show times mixed up and you know why he got the times mixed up because Let's he, do it. he was hip-hop years old He's celebrating his 50th birthday. Shout Happy out. birthday! Happy birthday! Shout out. Uh, he's doing some big things in the business as well. So hopefully nice. you guys can cross paths at one time or another. Yeah. Uh, last question. There's a, there's a young person out there. And it doesn't have to be little boy, little girl, whoever. There's a person out there that has a creative dream and they're looking at you for inspiration. What do you tell them? What advice do you give them? I would tell them, go for it. Don't give up. It doesn't matter if you're old. It doesn't matter if you're young. You're not too old or too young to be creative. You are an artist, no yes, matter how yeah. old you are. So keep going. Keep moving forward. 
don't let money motivate you because if you're motivated by money, mm. you're not going to make it. You have to do it because you love it. Do it because yep. you like I it. Agree. I clap. Well, once you find, once you're doing something that you love, the money will find you. But don't do it for money because it's going to frustrate you and stress you out when the money's not coming. Because when you're first doing it, the money's not coming at first. Even now, like I'm doing all these comedy shows. I've been on TV and everything. The money is up and down. Sometimes I be balling and sometimes I be broke as hell. That's why I got EBT jokes. You know what I'm saying? But I don't do it for the money. I do them, them jokes. Them yeah. jokes need disclaimers. I'm telling you. You can't, just, you can't just put spring them EBT jokes on people. Let me put this out here before we go. Brooklyn, I'm saying it right here on the air. When I come out to Los Angeles um, to do my fellowship with um, with Disney animator. Congratulations and on Thank you. Shout outs to Calvin Brown Jr. Shout outs to Leron Dejonet. I can't wait to work with you guys. Um, I want to just put this in your head. If you are interested in writing a book, maybe we could do a collaboration and I do the artwork, do some caricatures and illustrations for you. I would love to do something like that with you. Um, just something to think about. Like maybe we could um, could put that in the universe and, and think on that but you have been a fantastic guest Thank you i've so had much. And I'm down right. to work with you in, in whatever capacity we need to do a cartoon yes. we do an animation i'll do the oh voice. hell yeah you know what i'm saying uh thank you bonnie and thank you brandon i appreciate that but yeah i'll do the voice you know what i'm saying i'm a voice actor i actually um to plug myself there's a show called nine nine years to Netflix, please do a puppet show for children and I do the singing voice of Susie, believe it or not. I'm the singing voice of six nine years to Neptune. I sing too, yeah. What I wasn't can't you do? Singing, but I I went I, I auditioned to be the speaking voice of Susie, but they said my voice was too young and too youthful. But apparently I sing like an old lady. So <laughs> I'm the singing voice of Susie on nine years to Neptune. So show that to your children. <laughs> now anybody who's watching, um and and they're like, wow, Brooklyn Jones is gorgeous. Are you single? Yeah. And, I, and, and and you did mention that this is Pride Month. So yes. um, you want to speak on that real quick because happy Pride Month and Thank happy you. Black Music Month. But speak on that in particular about, because I know somebody is like, hmm. I am single. I'm not really checking for the dudes right now. So if you're a dude, uh, stay on my DMs. <laughs> Unless you, you get, get, get some, some jokes. <laughs> but yeah. <laughs> but thank you. You know, broke somebody's that. heart, girl. Sorry. I'm sorry. <laughs> Speaking of taco. <laughs> oh God, let's wrap this up. <laughs> you are so unapologetically. <laughs> I love it. And another contender. Well, no, I appreciate that, everybody. Um, male and female, uh, follow me on Instagram. Just gonna be sliding up in my DMs. <laughs> but no, my Instagram is it's Brooklyn Jones. So I'm very active on Instagram. I, I speak to everyone. If you do DM me, I, I, I will write back. <laughs> so, I'm not one of those rude people on Instagram where you DM them. Well, actually, I'm lying. Yes, I am. Sometimes some people are cool as hell. I ignore some yeah. people, but if you come at me correctly, I'll engage with you. We hold a conversation, we chat, we joke, whatever. But if you start sounding weird and crazy, I, I cut that off. Listen, Brooklyn. <laughs> For the most part, I'm cool. AKA Lena. Um, it is a joy and you know, honestly, you are a real one. I've always thought I can tell just through social media, so I cannot wait to meet you in person. Oh, we're gonna hang out. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah. We're gonna get some Chinese food. So thank you for stopping by and um wanna wish everybody thank you for tuning in for the night and um um expect the unexpected. We're out. Oops, thank you everybody.